next is Jane Brogan. Different perspective from uh, the same office. Hi, thank you for having me here today. I'm Jane Brogan. I'm the Chief Policy and Research Officer at the Governor's Office of Storm Recovery. I'm going to abbreviate it as Gozer. It's just easier to say. Um, so I've been at Gozer for about five years, but I've been in HUD-funded disaster recovery for over 12. Um, so I'm going to kind of take a step back from the specific projects that Suzanne just talked about and talk about a little bit of why Gozer was created, um, how we developed our projects and implemented them, and some lessons learned. So seven years ago, the state faced unprecedented damage from Hurricane Sandy. And at that time, we were only about a year out from the destruction upstate from Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Ali. Almost 300,000 New Yorkers saw their homes and businesses damaged or destroyed. And there were billions of dollars in federal aid being delivered in unpredictable batches. Local governments were trying to get back on their feet just as much as their constituents. So Gozer was created in 2013 to centralize the recovery process and administer the state's $4.6 billion of community development block grant disaster recovery funding that we received from HUD. So it's the same program as CDBG. It's the same regulations, same eligible activity, same national objective, and then everything else is different. It's, it's very, very different. There's different requirements. Um, one of the main things is that it is um, allocated through an appropriation from Congress after a disaster. So it is not an annual allocation. States and grantees aren't aware of how much money is coming even after the disaster. New York State received their funds in four tranches, the first being in March of 2013, and the last being almost two years later. So it's very difficult sometimes to create disaster recovery programs when you don't know how much money you're going to get or exactly what it's going to be for. But we did it. Um, so Gozer was created because we knew that the power and the frequency of these storms were going to worsen and continue. And we needed to become more resilient. So not only did we need to recover, we needed to create projects that worked with nature as well as engage the communities to understand how best we could build back stronger and smarter. Gozer has five core programs, housing, small business, infrastructure, community reconstruction, which are the projects that Suzanne talked about, and rebuild by design. And we sought to strike a balance between urgent action and long-term strategic planning by quickly delivering aid to those with immediate rebuilding needs while also developing resiliency solutions for long-term protection. So what happens after a devastating weather event like Sandy, Irene, and Lee? There are three general phases of disaster response and recovery, immediate response, initial, and long-term recovery. I also like to say that this should be a closed circle. When we're not in response and recovery, we should always be working on preparedness and continued resiliency. So the immediate response is in the days before, during, and after um, a storm event. And the main goal is to respond to the most dire and pressing needs of those who have been impacted. And then you quickly go into the initial response. And work, that work is focused on getting people back into their homes. And at the same time, communities are cleaning up debris and getting critical infrastructure back up and running. Phase three, the, whoops, phase three, the long-term recovery, is what Gozer was created to do, which is complete repairs, reconstruction, and resiliency. So between Irene, Lee, and Sandy, there were 38 impacted counties in New York State. So Gozer's money can only be spent in those counties, and the main focus has to be in the most impacted and distressed counties. So a lot of our work is in Long Island, in New York City, but we, most of, but we do have our community reconstruction program in upstate, too. Um, New York City received their own grant, so they have developed their own housing program and small business program. We do do a buyout program and community reconstruction in New York City, but mainly we're focused outside of New York City. So this just shows us how we've allocated our $4.6 billion. Since housing was one of the most urgent priorities in the aftermath of the storms, we've committed more than half of our funding. Um, and the housing program not only repairs home, but also focuses on resiliency initiatives. Um, I should note also there's a deadline, a congressional mandated deadline to spend all of our funding by September 30th, 2022. So about nine years after Sandy or after Gozer was created. So Gozer was created 
We, we hired everyone, we developed programs, we're running them, have to help. We have 11,000 homeowners, have to help them all within nine years and spend the $4.6 billion. We are on the path to do that. <laughs> So our single family housing program not only does repairs and reconstructions, but we also have an elevation initiative, which is one of the first of its kind to support both mandatory elevation and optional elevation in a 100 year floodplain. Um, those efforts are not only aimed to protect life and property, but also to stabilize flood insurance premiums. We've also funded other optional mitigation measures for homes, whether or not they're in the 100 year floodplain such as elevation of electrical systems, retrofitting homes with flood resilient materials, installation of backflow valves, and installation of roof strapping. As I said, our, our single family homeowner program has 11,000 homes that we're assisting. More than 1,400 of these are required mandatory elevation, meaning that they're in the 100 year floodplain and they were substantially damaged by one of the storms. And about 2,000 homeowners chose the option to elevate their home, even though they weren't substantially damaged. So these homeowners are recognizing that it's really important for resiliency and protect the homes in the future. So another one of our programs that was really successful, especially on the resiliency of communities, is our buyout program. So we developed our single family housing program. But we also understood that rebuilding was not always the wisest or safest in some neighborhoods. So our buyout program is similar to the Suffern buyout program where we purchase properties from interested homeowners and then permanently return them to nature. Um, Gozer also demolishes all of the structures for these areas. We are looking, we, since we will go away in September 2022, um, we are looking at disposition strategies and organizations to take over the long-term care and management of these properties. Um, so in order to identify our buyout areas, we utilize the New York State Department of State Risk Assessment Analysis, and the extreme and high-risk areas were considered for the program, along with some other criteria, such as if there was a history of flooding in the area, if local and county officials were interested and understood the benefits of a program, and if the majority of the pro property owners voiced an interest. Our buyout program also complements our acquisition program, which purchases storm damaged properties and then auctions them off to be um, redeveloped in a more resilient manner. So they had to meet New York State building code, most likely have to be elevated. Um, and this program operates in areas with slight risk of future funding and local municipalities are happy because it keeps them on the tax basis when we may be taking properties off through our buyout program a couple neighborhoods away. So it's not always about one strategy being better but, than the other, but knowing where and when to implement them. So this kind of just walks through what Suzanne said. Um, so I don't need to go into that, but these pictures are our Oakwood Beach bio area, which is where we purchased 300 homes, which is almost 25 and a half acres um, in Staten Island. So the first picture is in 2012 pre-Sandy. The middle one is in 2014 when we had started to demolish the homes. And the last one is today with all the homes demolished um, and the area had been graded and reseeded with na native plant species. And then this slide shows, so the picture on the left is the Oakwood Beach buyout area overlaid with the Department of State risk area. You can see that it's in the extreme risk area. The picture on the right is the inundation area from, Hurricane, from Sandy. And um, as you can see from the bottom map, we're turning the Oakwood Beach buyout area to natural green space creates a continuation of exi an existing natural barrier, which protects the communities further inland. So there were definitely some lessons learned and challenges to buyout areas, um, but we found that early and frequent stakeholder discussion is key. And they can be very costly. Programs need to incentivize participation and are successful with most buy-in. As I mentioned, buyouts can face opposition from municipalities because they primarily depend on property tax revenues. And disposition strategies should be discussed at the very early planning stages of a buyout um, so that you can determine best use and maintenance and ownership. So another one of our programs is the Community Reconstruction Program, which is where the projects that Suzanne talked about were developed out of. Goza recognize the need to give communities a voice of their own in the recovery, so the Community Reconstruction Program was created. 
It started as a grassroots planning program that has grown to assist 124 storm damaged communities. The planning process included residents and business owners and covered three broad regions of upstate New York City and Long Island. And this process resulted in community plans which provided the groundwork for both immediate action, so projects that Gozer will be funding to implement, as well as for future resiliency initiatives that can be implemented by communities down the road. Across the state, it is expected that we'll be spending nearly $600 million to implement about 300 projects that were included in our community reconstruction plans. And these projects range from essential infrastructure investments to critical public services, and they'll help communities recover from the storms while also ensuring physical, economic, and social resiliency. So Gozer is a disaster recovery agency, has some broad lessons learned. Um, a lot of our projects have been mimicked and, and implemented across the nation as well as across New York State for some of the smaller storms that not, may not have risen to a presidentially declared disaster. Um, but policies and procedures um, have been used in the Finger Lakes, the recent Finger Lakes flooding and the Lake Ontario flooding also. So some of the lessons that we've learned is that for long-term and large-scale disaster recovery, you should focus on centralization of a storm recovery agency. It allows for emphasis and prioritization of storm recovery, as well as to develop knowledge of the intricate world of recovery policies and funding requirements. Like I said, our, our money is governed by the CDBG regulations, but our CDBG program in the state tried to manage it at the beginning, but they have their own portfolio. They also were very confused about the all additional layers of recovery that comes with the disaster recovery funding. Um, understanding the expectations of, the, of disaster recovery and the communication, um, the process can be long and confusing. There are, are a lot of federal requirements that come with it. And when you have 11,000 homes, there's only so many contractors, especially elevation contractors and, that can do it. Our housing program should be closed and completed by the end of this year, which seems like a really long time um, after Sandy, but the homeowners needed that time to find the contractors and to be able to get up and running. At the very beginning, homeowners weren't aware it was gonna take that long. So to just continue communicate with stakeholders, local municipalities, homeowners, the press even, that it's gonna take a long time, but we're working with them. We'll have constant, constant communication and help them through the process. We wanna develop flexible programs that build back smarter. Um, programs should be developed to be flexible, to allow for any changes in federal and local policies as well as meet homeowner needs. And then you also wanna plan for vulnerabilities and risk. So you wanna build back smarter. You don't wanna build back just what was there. You wanna plan for rising sea levels, climate change, and, inc and increasingly frequent storms. Um, recovery programs are, need, need to look at what's gonna happen and not just what the past was. And, and not, this isn't a complete list, but a final one is that partnerships are essential in the recovery process, both with communities, local municipalities, nonprofits, and academic institutions. So while this isn't exhaustive of Gozer's programs or the lessons learned, it serves as a, a snapshot of the complex and often muddled realm of disaster recovery. Um, despite the numerous challenges, Gozer and, and other disaster recovery agencies, the work we do is imperative. And all conversations about climate change and resiliency are important and needed, and they will continue to make New York more resilient as well as the nation. Thank you.